Hi everybody, it's Christina Quick, the Tarot Biz Mentor, here from the Profitable Psychic Divination and Business Academy. Welcome to another video. So this is going to be a continuation in our Money Mindset series in March and possibly into April. And today we're going to be talking about overcoming another limiting belief. I've already done a video, uh, part of this series, the previous video to this one was overcoming the I can't afford it limiting belief. Today we're going to be talking about a different limiting belief and specifically we're going to be talking about the my niche is saturated and or my market is crowded limiting belief and this comes up a lot and um, it comes up a lot a lot and I hear this um, from my business coaching clients and they come to me and they say Christina I feel like the market is saturated. I feel like everybody else is already doing what it is that I want to do. They're already coaching people in the way that I want to coach people. They're already releasing content that I want to release. And I'm feeling jaded about it. I'm feeling resentful about it. I feel like I can't, that there's no entry for me. I feel like that, what's the what's the point of even getting started? Because there's other people out there who are already modeling this successfully. And I don't want to come into a market that's oversaturated and just get ignored, right? And so that is one of the, the big things that I talk about in um, one of my courses, the Market Yourself as a Spiritual Life Coach course. It's one of the core things that we really get um, get really deep in, in and involved in, especially uh, there's a whole semester about niching down and um, how to niche down successfully. And the very first thing I say is, don't you think that in every pr profession that there's a bunch of people already offering those services successfully? Um, think about hairstylists and barbers or tax preparers or grocery stores or or pizza delivery chains. I mean, there's so many out there that are all offering great services, but do we sit there and say, is this market saturated? And sometimes we do, and, and maybe we can look at it uh, from that perspective, but all of these kinds of businesses that I just talked about are location dependent. So they're servicing a, a, a location that has a, a certain amount of people within that driving distance. And so that is already one thing to really look at is, um, you know, the idea that you are hopefully building your business online. When you're building your business online, there is no limit to the amount of clients that you can have, no limit to the amount of demographics, the the um, locations of people that you can you know talk to. I talk to people all over the world in different countries everywhere. I mean, I have I talk to people um, in, in the different hemisphere that I am, you know, so. When you're building your business online, there really is no such thing as a market being too saturated first and foremost, because online is a, an, an infinite, limitless capability of setting up a business. It's just, there's just no such thing as market saturation, right? So, um, you know, first of all, there in every vocation, there's going to be plentiful uh, amount of people. There's going to be a bunch of people that are offering similar services. And nowadays, you know, the, this is a thing that I really notice about people is that um, everybody wants to do something that's never been done before. Everybody wants to create something new or original. And in my opinion, that's a surefire way to discourage yourself from doing anything at all. Because if you think about it, we live in such a time where there's very little new or original ideas out there. And when they are new and original, there's a whole bunch of people that go out there and build that same business and take on that same uh, business model. Uh, I'll give you a, a, an example. So um, when I'm also in the makeup world. I love makeup and uh, beauty and things like that. And so one of the newest inventions that, that's come out is those magnetic lashes with the magnetic liner, right? Now, it used to be that there was just one company that did that. I kid you not, within maybe 30 days, now there's 20, 50 different companies that all utilize that same thing. So you can't look at it and say, I want to do something new and completely original. And maybe you could do something new and completely original, but you're not going to be new and original for very long. That's just how the world works now, okay? And so what it's really calling you to do and, and this, um, you know, this limiting belief of that my market is saturated or my niche is saturated or my market is overcrowded. That there's too many people trying to do what I'm trying to do. So what's the point, right? Um, what it's really calling you to do is to find your specialization, right? To find your key demographic um, and instead of you know just setting up a business and offering services to the general public um, one of the core things that i recommend doing is niching down and um, 
chances are actually in most cases most people that i talk to i would say at least nine out of ten people that i talk to about this that they aren't niching down enough they aren't providing a, a, a specialized service enough to appeal to a certain type of person they aren't providing a specialized service to provide a solution to a certain problem okay right and so um, what that really involves is, is uh, working on your ideal client avatars and uh, really understanding your demographic, really understanding the buying triggers that people have, um, the buying motivations that people have to purchase services and products that you offer. And uh, like I said, I talk about this in the Market Yourself as a Spiritual Life Coach course. It's one of the core things that we really talk about. Um, and the thing that I notice is that it's not uh, that most people think that it's enough to just niche down to become a spiritual life coach versus a life coach. And actually, that's not nearly enough now. Um, you can go much, much deeper than that. And actually, I have another video on YouTube. If you look at my channel, it's called I think it's called five highly profitable spiritual life coaching niches. Um, so check that out. And it talks a little bit more about different ways that you can niche down. So yeah, it, uh, most of the time, the problem that you're you're facing uh, as far as like my, my market's too crowded is that you just aren't niched down enough and you need to niche down even more um, to really stand out and you really need to invest your time and energy to learn how to understand what buying triggers and motivations that people have. Um, that takes a long time. It does. It takes a little while to really understand and it takes some trial and error. But that is the key to really understanding um, that. And once you have that down, it, it's it's a no non no it's a no brainer thing. Um, once you know how to talk to your ideal client, you know how to um, you know write your copy, and you know how to appeal to a certain person and really press those buying triggers, then it's it's never a matter of uh, you know you become that person's um, best choice, right? Because you are speaking directly to them. You're solving a specific problem that they have. Um, and so that's one of the core things that you can do to overcome this belief is you need to niche down and niche down and niche down and keep niching down um, even more and become more specialized, more focused, more intentional, intentional about who you are trying to sell your services to and why they may want to purchase those services and work that into your marketing strategy. But uh, anyway, uh, let's discuss a little bit about why it feels like your market is saturated and what's really going on here on an energetic level so you can understand what's happening. So, okay, so the the best way I can explain this is is through the law of attraction. Uh, a lot of you are law of attraction practitioners are, are aware of the law of attraction. Now, what's the very first thing that we do when we're trying to manifest something, we surround ourselves with people who are manifesting that, or we surround ourselves with um, uh, things and situations that are conducive to that uh, manifestation. And so that's the very first thing that we do. We surround ourselves with like-minded people. Uh, specifically, we join groups, we follow people on YouTube, we follow people on social media, um, we friend people that are embodying what it is we're trying to manifest in our spiritual life coaching business. And so when we do that, we kind of just wake up all of a sudden, you know, three, six months, maybe a year later, and we're like, hold on a minute, there's a whole bunch of people that are doing this, right? And what it is, is you've put yourself into that energy and you've put yourself into those manifestation circles and you've put yourself around those people. And then all of a sudden you wake up and, oh my God, that's all there is. And so that's a realization you kind of have to come to. So it appears on uh, on the surface level that your market is saturated, but actually you're just a really good manifester and a really amazing attractor and you've attracted all these people and all these experiences into your energy field and then that's all of a sudden all you see and you kind of wake up from that and you realize, oh, uh, yeah, this is all that there is. When in fact that there's that's not all that there is. There are many different um uh, groups and uh, people out there that you could follow and, and be around, but you have consciously or subconsciously perhaps chosen to surround yourself with people who are embodying what it is that you want to manifest because you're in learning mode, right? You're, you're trying to learn from those people. You're trying to see how they're doing it, what makes them successful, how they're presenting their information. You're looking for new insights into your own, uh, you know, education and what you can, what you teach your clients and, and strategies and, and exercises and things like that. So, so it appears that your niche is saturated, but in fact, you're just a really good manifester and you just manifested all these people and experiences so that you could bring that energy into your energy field. 
So um, a lot of people are blown away when I tell them that and they're like, uh, yeah, duh, that makes total sense. Like, why didn't I think about that, right? And so the core thing here is it, it's really teaching you three things. This, this feeling of um, what's the point? Why should I even bother? There's people out there who are way more successful than me who've been doing this for bunches of years and I'm just the new kid on the block. I'm new in this field and what's even the point of even trying, right? Because I'm just going to get ignored. Nobody's going to pay attention to me. So um, the very first thing, the three things, the very first thing, one, is that you need to choose to look at everybody who's manifesting what it is that you want to manifest or embodying what it is that you're trying to manifest in your spiritual coaching business as co-creators of one big manifestation of the movement behind what you are coaching people on. So if you're a self-love coach, there's a self-love movement behind that. And so there's going to be many different teachers and and, and many different thought leaders in, in that specific, uh, specific movement. And so um, our first instinct is to look at them as competition, right? Because um, that's our ego trying to protect us. So one of the, the easiest things that you can do is try to look at those people as co-creators of manifestation of the movement behind what it is that you're trying to manifest and see them as like-minded people, thought leaders, and see them as colleagues, see them as people who are um, going to be great people to do guest interviews with or guest blog posts or, um, you know, start inviting them to your podcast or go be a guest on their podcast and, and, and so on and so forth and start seeing them as allies, start seeing them as co-creators of this big manifestation and um, see them as your friends and people that um, are basically kind of gateways that that you could uh, work with in, in some ways to actually grow your business, right? So start thinking about that instead of seeing them as competition. Now, the second thing that you um, that this limiting belief is really doing for you is that it's telling you that it's time to start showing up. And this is really difficult for a lot of people. Um, and uh, it, it's time to stop following people, uh, stop following so many people. It's time to really condense your energy down. Um, it's time to maybe leave some groups or stop following some pages or... Um, you know, stop putting your energy in places that you're no longer getting something out of, that you're no longer really learning from, right? Um, and so you feel that like knot, it's like a knot in your stomach, it's a knot in your solar plexus, which is your seat of power, that yellow chakra that you have. And it feels like a knot or a rock there because it's, um, it, it's taking your power away by, um, and it feels like it feels bad because it's an unequal energy exchange. You're no longer learning from that person, right? You're no longer getting something out of it. And what happens is your ego will immediately go to, okay, this person's a competition. You'll immediately go to, um, uh, you'll immediately start finding faults with this person that is not really based on reality. And you start, um, uh, and it, it can be actually kind of painful because our ego really wants to tell us all sort of lie, all like lies and mistruths and illusions about other people that we've been following and loved. And then all of a sudden we start um, finding little things to kind of pick them apart with and things like that. And, and actually that is your ego telling you that it's trying to protect you and that um, the reality is that there's nothing wrong with those people. They're no different than the who they used to be. Um, it's just that you're not vibrating at the frequency necessary anymore to learn from them. And you're ready to kind of take these lessons that you've learned and put them out to the universe and, and you know, start teaching your own version of, of those lessons and, and teach them in your own way. So that's the second thing that it's telling you is that it's time to actually start showing up. And uh, that can be really difficult for people. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, when you find yourself judging people or when you find yourself finding things wrong with people, or you find yourself starting to resent certain people that you used to love and follow and, and you cherish their lessons, it's usually telling you that you're just um, not aligned with that person anymore and that you need to perhaps even, uh, the third thing would be to start attracting new people and new experiences and new opportunities into your energy field. And these um, these feelings are telling you that it's time to start inviting new teachers and you're, it's time to start uh, looking for new mentors, start looking for new groups, new people to follow, new lessons. Um, and it's it's because people were not meant to be around people 
forever. Um, uh, soulmates, yes, of course. Twin flames, yes, of course. Maybe, perhaps. It depends on the, the situation and your beliefs around that. Um, there will be people that are in our lives for a lifetime, and they will be our soulmate people. But um, when it comes to teachers and guides and instructors, um, I really, truly believe that we're uh, in nine times out of 10, only supposed to be in people's lives for a certain amount of time to achieve a certain goal, right? Um, and so it may be time uh, to start looking for some new teachers, some new mentors. Um, and it's like saying thank you for the time and energy that those teachers and instructors gave you, the lessons that they gave you, and, you know, saying thank you for being a guide on my journey. Uh, maybe we'll meet again, but for now I'm going to, you know, put my energy elsewhere. And so those are the core three things that that limiting belief, the market that my market is saturated or my niche is crowded or, you know, that, that same limiting belief that is really telling you is that one, um, <sighs> People are not competition, they're collaborators, they're co-creators, right? So utilize that to your benefit. Two, it's telling you that um, it's time to start showing up. It's time to stop absorbing other people's content and it's time to really start putting out your own content. And I actually have a video about that. Um, I think it's called... Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I'll, I'll put the link down below um, in the description box below and it'll it'll link to that. But I can't remember what it's called. Um, yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put it down in the description box below. Um, and then the third thing, it, it's telling you that it's time to start attracting some new people and new experiences into your life. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope this mindset, uh, money mindset shift was helpful to you. And let me know if you resonate with this and comment down below if you got a lot out of this video. And I will see you in the next one.